So here's find successor from the book. Now remember, find successor in the book is a general case for any node. Uh, so it turns out we can simplify this quite a bit. Uh, so a lot of this code we don't need in the case where we're doing delete and we're finding successor. So the successor on delete will always be uh, following that left slope down. Look at how to, to simplify this. And so let's go to this next slide. So this shows you the original book code and I've grayed out everything you don't need. So basically when you find the successor of a node, you basically go to the right child and find min. And find min starts at where we started. So it starts at self, which is the, uh, it's the right child here and it's going to, if it has a left child, it's going to fo follow the left child until there isn't one. So once it doesn't find the left child, current will be pointing to the last node we were working with and we return that. So we can simplify all this into the code like this. So find successor for uh, self. We get the right child and while we can go left, if we follow that slope down until this is false. So every time we loop, we're going to replace the successor to the next child we found. So when we're all done, this will return the successor. Now if we are uh, deleting uh, on, uh Okay, so now let's look at splice out. So this is the code for splice out. Now the author wrote splice out also in the general case, so this would splice out any node in the tree. Uh, so you could do a find and then splice that node out. So it turns out there's not a lot of code we need here. Uh, so let's look at simplifying this as well. So you just have to cover the code we're going to do. So this is a little di uh, diagram I did that has everything you need to know. So here's splice out. And we don't use this code in the middle because, so let's see, so we're splicing out the successor. The successor is the child where we don't have a left node anymore. There's no left child to follow. Uh, so this thing, if it has any children, it will not have a left child. So this if here would never be true uh, for the case of delete. So this is the code we don't need. And all the code that's left can be simplified quite a bit. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to do that. You can you can look at how to simplify it. So basically we have four cases we're going to do. So what we have here is if we're if we if this was the node we're going to delete and red is the is the successor. So this is the case where the successor is the is a right child with no children. Uh, so if that's the case, that's case one, and that's taken care of, of by this statement. Uh, right here. Since there's no children, we just have to set the parent right child to point uh, to none. We're basically getting rid of the successor. So that was this is splice out, remember, it gets rid of the successor node. Uh, the second case is the successor is the right, but it does have a right child. So in this case, here's the node we're going to delete. Here's the right child. It has no left child, so that's going to be the successor, but it does have a right child. We have to link the right child back to point here, as well as uh, uh, link the parent right child to point to this. So we're going to have number two here. We'll show up two places, here and here. So these two lines, right here and here, will be responsible for this case. Okay, the third case is the successor is a left child, so somewhere, uh, this is the, uh, perhaps the one we're deleting, and we and the right hand side is not it, so we've followed this chain down all the way till we found a left child uh, that has no left child, so that's the last left child, so this is the successor of the one we're going to delete, but it has no children. So in this case, three, we just do this uh, one line here. And lastly, the successor is a left child and it has a right child. So we've followed uh, all the left childs down and we've arrived at a left child that doesn't have a, a left child. So that's the successor of the node we're deleting. But it does have a parent, so we have to link this uh, child to point up to the parent. And we have to link the parent's left pointer to point to this child. 
So this is number four, that's taking care of this line and this line. So we just have a couple more things. Uh, we're going to cover the iterator for the binary search tree and then we'll look at the complete remove code. So a uh, binary search tree has an iterator and the iterator can be called from a for loop uh, or inside of a list. So if you call list on the tree or if you say for some variable in uh, a node or the tree, it's going to iterate through everything and return it in order from smallest to largest. So the way this works is an iterator is a standard function that will uh, implement uh, the using it in a for loop, so it's an operator. And uh, what it has to do is it has to yield things. So the iterator for the binary tree just calls the iterator on the root. So inside the tree node, we also have an iterator. So this this will iterate over a subtree that you pass as the object self. So the way it works is uh, if self has a left child, it has a left subtree, it's then going to use the for loop to iterate over the whole left subtree. So this is actually recursive because this line here that uses a for loop in turn calls iterator again with the subtree replacing self. So that will recurse over all uh, all the subtree. And then inside of that it's going to be yielding keys. So each key it returns is set to element and then this yield will yield the element of all the ones in the subtree. Uh, and then when it gets the node that originally was called on it, re it, re it yields that key and then it goes into the right subtree and loops through all the nodes in the right subtree in order and returns the key values and it yields that. Uh, so when you call iterator on binary tree it ends up doing this and going over the entire tree and returning the nodes in order and then you can use that in a for loop or make a list or something that expects an iterator. And The last thing we'll look at is just to show you the remove code all completed so you can see that when you put all the remove code together it's quite long. We started out, we covered case 1 where it's a leaf and we just replace the child. Then we covered case 2 where you have uh, one child but you have all the options of it being a left or right child uh, and whether you're a left and right child so that there were six subcases. So here's all the code for doing that. And then we have the code we just covered which is case 3 where you have two uh, children and we rely a lot on find successor and splice out to do most of the work. And so that's it. The next series of videos we're going to add more code to this code to make what's called an AVL tree and uh, we'll see shortly why we're going to do that. It has to do with getting a real good performance from a, from a, a binary search tree.